Okay guys, in this video I'm going to give my run through on paper two, uh, run through the main topics that usually appear on tape, paper two and just give whatever tips that I can uh, for it. So uh, the first uh, large topic that's on paper two is statistics. So here you're looking at things like being able to draw bar charts, histograms, line plots, uh, any type of, of diagram to show information. Uh, you have to know your mean, median and mode, which you should know from your junior cert. Uh, your standard deviation, remember how to do that on your calculator. Uh, your range and your interquartile range as well. Um, then also in statistics you're looking at things like distributions, uh, scatter graphs and correlation coefficient. So that's on your calculator as well, how to do your correlation co coefficient. And also then <coughs> for your scatter graphs, you have a causality and line of best fit. And then we can move into our inferential statistics where we're looking at our empirical rule, hypothesis testing, Z scores, P values, uh, confidence intervals, margin of error. So that tends to be a big question, worth a lot of marks, so make sure you know what to do. You can find all those formulas uh, in your log table. Uh, then we have probability. Uh, looking at things like expected value, uh, Bernoulli trials, independent events, uh, conditional probability, and you can expect to do some problem solving uh, within this using a combination of these. Uh, then we're on to geometry. Uh, we obviously have our proofs, um, theorem 11, 12 and 13, but also you have your junior cert proofs, which you could be asked, uh, theorem 4, 6, 9, 14 and 19. So you could be asked to do the formal proof of any of those. Um, we have our constructions that you should hopefully have gone through over the year. Um, you can be asked to do any of those constructions as a standalone question or as, as part of another question. There could be some sort of problem solving in geometry as well. You could also be asked to prove something that is not a theorem uh, but you use all the theorems and corollaries and all that that you know uh, in order to prove the thing that you're asked. Uh, then lastly in, in geometry you have your enlargements um, which could be uh, something getting bigger or smaller uh, and you have a scale factor um, and remember that uh, your area and your sides enlarge at different uh, rates. Um, Coordinate geometry then, this is the line and the circle. You may have learned them as two separate topics, but usually they're intertwined into one question. So you have things like the equation of the line, slope of the line, perpendicular distance between a point and a line, area of a triangle. Um, you have the equation of a circle in different forms. So if the center is at zero, zero, if the center is somewhere else, uh, you have the general equation of a circle. Uh, you need to be able to solve for a tangent to the circle um, and a line intersecting a circle. Uh, your tangent to a circle, remember the question, the type of question where you might have a point outside a circle, you'll have a circle and then you'll have two lines going from the point touching the circle at two separate tangents. So use the perpendicular distance uh, from a point to a line, the formula there, going from the center of the circle to the point of intersection between the tangent and the circle. And you're gonna do it in terms of M and you solve for your two M's. Um, any formulas that you need in coordinate geometry are on page 18 and 19 of your log tables. And then lastly, we have uh, the big section on trigonometry in paper two. So, Trigonometry, you could be looking at your identities, your trigonometric identities. Uh, for trigonometry, log tables, page 13, 14, and 15 is where you want to be looking. Um, you could have trigonometric equations. You could have trigonometric graphs. You could have transformations on these graphs. So what happens to sine x when it becomes sine 2x or 2 sine x or sine x plus 2? Um, so you have different transformations going on there. And then, of course, you have your sine rule, your cosine rule, and your area rule. You'll find all them on page 16 of your log tables. Um, and you should be able to use them in any problem-solving capacity 
uh, combining them together uh, using one. Sometimes you can use one or the other. You could use the sine rule or the cosine rule. It's whatever one you're more comfortable with sometimes. Uh, you need to know 3D problems. If, you, if you're looking at a 3D problem, make sure you draw the triangle that you're focused on. So if it's a, a cube, you might be looking at the bottom face of the, of the cube, draw it out in 2D so you can see what's going on. Then you might be looking at a side and then you might be looking at a diagonal. And then other types of questions are the elevation and depression questions. So the, the standard one is uh, someone standing on top of a cliff and looking down at a boat on the water. Um, but you could have any kind of variation of this as well. So remember also paper two, you could be asked anything from paper one as well. There's no rules to say you can't be asked different topics. So if there's something that didn't come up on paper one, maybe just bear it in mind going into paper two that it could come up on this paper. Okay, so best of luck in the exam. Remember you've done all the hard work at this stage. Uh, it's just your last bits of revision that you're doing now. If you have any questions, you can ask me and I'll try and get to as many of them as possible before uh, Monday morning.